everyone and welcome back to another video. It's Brianna Ray from BriIY here to bring you a challenge. Um, I also want to apologize if my voice sounds a little, um, let's say janky today. Uh, I have been sick for a couple of days. Um, no fever, no nothing, just a lot of congestion and it makes me sound icky. So I'm very sorry for that. Uh, but without further ado, let's, uh, get, let's get into the content, right? So today I wanted to take a chance at painting with something that is not usually used to paint with. Um, in this instance, very specifically, I wanted to paint using nail polish. Um, unfortunately for me and for my wallet, um, I don't really have a lot of variety in nail polish color. I believe I got this one time when I was doing Chicago because I thought red nails would be right for the move. And I got this uh, for my engagement party because there was a purple theme. Otherwise, this is what I put on my nails. Um, and I'm sure I had a white uh, striper at some point to do French tips, but this is really it. I've got clear coats, I've got a matte coat, um, this like sheer pink for obvious reasons for my French tips, this light pink for all over, this bright pink for all over, then I've got some like shimmers, one that's a little orangier, and one that's a little more mauve and one glitter, baby. Um, so this is kind of an interesting color palette to be working with. I'm not 100% certain I'm not going to use the red. I'm really not, I really don't think I'm gonna be using this guy, um, mostly because it is uh, that like kind of shimmery purple, and also because it is purple and it doesn't really fit into this like warm tone vibe I have going on with these guys. So I think I might actually mix the red and like this brighter pink to kind of get some lighter shades of it uh, because I do have a concept in mind and if I do anything with this guy, it might be some clouds. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So this is really a tool two-fold challenge. I am painting with something that is not really designed to be painted with, obviously. Uh, nail polish is for painting your nails, not really for painting on paper. Um, and I'm also going to have a very limited palette. So I'm gonna shove this baby under here and I'm gonna try to cut it in half a bit um, just so that I can do this on a smaller scale. And I also had a different challenge in mind where I was gonna paint with my makeup collection. That one I think is gonna take some more logistical help and I do have like bigger palettes with more colors in it. Um, so I don't know, we'll see how that one goes uh, a little later, but I do like the idea of doing these like landscapes with non-traditional mediums. It just kind of sounds fun. So I've got this little guy here. I think I want to keep it sideways. I've also got a pencil that I'm going to kind of mark in. I think uh, most of my, most of my colors are pretty opaque except for the um, shimmers. So I'm going to assume that the pencil lines are going to be covered up and I want to start off just by kind of creating like a mountain range and then like a sun in the top corner and we're going to go from there. I have been around YouTube like a long time, I guess, so I feel like I've definitely seen someone do something like this in the past. I do not know how it went, but for some reason in the back of my mind, I had this idea that it just doesn't make any sense to go really detailed with um, nail polish paintings, especially if I'm using like the regular, you know, whatever uh, brushes that come with them. Um, because apparently it's very hard to control. I don't know where I heard that. I could not give you a source for that, but I have heard that. I could do maybe this sort of thing, and I do like red, and then a mix, and then the plain pink, and then like the light pink all the way on the back, and that should probably do it for like our four mountain ranges. Um, the closer they are to you, the more, what's the word I'm looking for? The darker they're supposed to be, and they're supposed to kind of get lighter as we go back. I'm not really certain what I'm gonna do about the sun yet, but that seems like a problem for later. So, yeah, I also didn't go all the way to the edges because I kind of want to maybe tear the edges a little bit to kind of create um, more of a textured look to this and kind of really steer into that messy skid, if you will. Yeah, let's uh, let's try doing this guy first and we'll see how it goes. I also really love the Sally Hansen like quick dry ones. I don't know why, probably because I'm impatient. I mean, what else didn't we know about me? Okay, so it's definitely a little more um, sheer than I was expecting. 
I don't like that. I want to make sure everything is pretty even. Um, that wasn't too, too horribly bad. Obviously, I can still see all the, um, lines underneath, though. I feel like the most, uh, time-efficient way to do this would be to kind of do every other layer. So since this one isn't going to touch this one, I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to do this, like, medium pink. I'll do the mix in a bit. Let those dry. I'm also glad that this one's going on last because this is one of my only ones that's not a quick dry. That can go in the back. And I might take one of the shears and like a cotton pad and kind of dab the background. That's what I'm thinking. So, I don't know, let's hyperlapse through it and see how it goes. All right, I'm actually kind of shocked by how much I like this like metallic one. Um, it's rose flush. Um, and I actually think it's kind of a nice, like, orange substitute, so I kind of want to fill this guy in with it, which wasn't the original plan, but I'm kind of down for it anyway. It's going to take a couple of layers, which is why I didn't really want to do it, but it's a lot waterier, so I feel like it goes a fair bit. Another thing that I noticed is the Sinful Colors, which is another just, like, drugstore brand. Um, it definitely flowed more like it was a little more liquidy than the Sally Hansen ones were um though it's not quick dry and I also will say and I don't know if this is like a I, I mean obviously this is like a weird thing to say I feel like it's just because of the size of the brush like I feel like one of the things that I forgot how much I liked about the Sally Hansen and the reason I kind of keep going back to them like in my gut and not even really thinking about it when I need nail polish is these super wide brushes as you can see that i'm working with right now fantastic all right so i added this kind of like glitter shading almost like a glitter snow maybe where it kind of hits one side of the mountains and not the other sort of situation. Um, I think that it looks closer to being finished, but it's still not totally done. So I kind of feel like I want to go in with this really sheer pink for the background. I'm afraid of what it's going to look like though. So I'm going to put it up in the corner first. Yeah, it's a lot thicker than I was hoping for. I was hoping for something maybe a little bit more sheer. But I kind of don't hate this weird texture that I have going on right now, so I'm actually going to do this to fill in the back, and then I think I'll be done. I don't know if it's perfect, but it's definitely better. I like the way this looks a lot better. Um, there's something very unfinished about the way that it was before. I also would really like to maybe go over, if I had a, like a black striping pen, I would totally go and outline all these things. I might do it with just a Sharpie. Um, once it's fully dry, but yeah, I thought this turned out pretty well. I actually think that this was, um, I don't want to say that I would recommend everybody do this because I know nail polish is expensive, but if you're like me and you don't wear it a whole lot, I mean, come on, I'm more of a uh, press on gal at this point. Um, but if you have nail polish laying around and it's been there for a really long time and you're not really sure what to do with it anymore. Um, this isn't uh, a bad little, a bad little challenge. I think, uh, it's definitely follows a lot of the same rules as painting on your nails. You want to go in one consistent direction or you're going to get weird bumpy junk like this, pull out all the pet hairs, um, which I mean, I spent so much time doing, honestly, um, you know, following a lot of those same techniques. Um, I think you can actually create some really cool, uh, pieces of work and I'm, it's not my favorite thing I've ever made, but I'm definitely happy with it. And I really like kind of looking at it in the light, especially on those like shimmerier parts. It's kind of fun. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. I do put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time, and I would love for you to be here for the next one. Thanks again so, so much, and I hope to see you then. Bye.